good evening. My name is Mariana. And let me tell you a bit about my story first in order for you to understand why I work and how I work for Beyond Type 1. I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes back in 1984 in Mexico City. I am born and raised Mexican. I was diagnosed with diabetes in a country that still nowadays does not have access or does not promote access to very basic tools like insulin or glucose meters for all those who need it. I was diagnosed in a country where still nowadays I am invisible for some health authorities and that I could not just stare and watch and see happening. So I needed to work and advocate. I learned diabetes education online and I learned advocacy online. I am still learning nowadays and I am learning basically through the use of social media. I started my own diabetes blog back in 2009 perhaps one of the first diabetes blogs in my country. And since then, I decided that I shouldn't just take care of myself, but I should take care of my own people. And that's why I do what I do. Next slide, please. In 2017, I accepted what I would say a big challenge, Beyond Type 1 in Spanish. Since then, we have been able to share about life with diabetes in our language as well, because even despite, despite of the word, word and work that some big organizations had done, there were not enough resources for us who speak Spanish, at least not in my country, Mexico. Nowadays, I provide a safe place and a web page with resources for people from Mexico, Ecuador, Argentina, Venezuela, and other Spanish-speaking countries I've been able to meet. The information I share is a complement to the work diabetes education carried out by large nonprofit organizations. Of course, I do not, or we do not, intend by no means to replace their work, but to provide additional resources. During all this time and during all these years working for different nonprofits and the uh, diabetes community in my own country, I have received hundreds of messages from people like me looking for information in their own language, which was hard enough just for all of us. Feeling alone in the diabetes space is not unusual. It is even more complicated if you do not speak the language it is spoken and most of the information I could find at least on social media was in English and it was my goal to provide information that I could feel would help people from my own country and origin and my own language and with whom I could share culture and eliminate some barriers. That is why we decided that uh, perhaps at the end of 2019 we decided that we wanted to share the resources that we already owned in different languages. And we started building our, and translating our own resources into German, French, Swedish, Dutch, and others. I understand because I've been there that translating is not just using words because diabetes has a language of its own. So I truly need the help of the community. Today, well, first of all, and not first of all, last of all, I would like to thank those who have changed my life and the life of others through the use of social media. People, for example, like Renza. We even use language matters in Espanol, so, just, so that you know. The impact that social media has had in other people's lives, especially people from other countries. Sometimes you don't know the impact and the amazing work that you've done to inspire us. And this is why we work so hard to learn, to advocate and to provide resources for all of those who cannot have access to those. Today, we want to thank everyone who has been an important part of our life and those who have already shared their stories in different languages with me and with others. I also want to give a big shout out to Julissa Rolón and Eugenia Araiza, who are also two Mexicans covering this event as well in Spanish. And of course, to thank you, the diabetes community, to, for welcoming us in other languages and cultures as well. Thank you.